So what's popping peons? It is your girl, Drea's Diary, and today we're doing Sunshine's Bakery, and we're going to do a double bake where I actually do get baked, and I enjoy the actual thing that I made because I did bake, and it is phenomenal. Um, obviously, I think it's amazing. Um, I almost ate the whole shit on camera, and just so y'all know, I'm a proud cookie. I really put my heart and soul into this project. So, you guys, I'm just going to be like, all right, fuck it, let's go. So, this is the lava cake. Well, I've already dug into it already. But this was a supposed to be a cake pop turned into lava cake with nuts and it's chocolate. And I know you're like, mm, why would you go chocolate? Um, I've been trying to get into chocolate because I like my man chocolate. And, you know, why not eat what you like? <laughs> I'm gonna take this shit out of context that I don't give a fuck. But um yeah. Mm. I think everybody should eat more chocolate. <laughs> All the day. Mm-mm. Mm. Anyways, you guys, even though this thing came out into the perfect cake pot, it came out to the perfect lobby cake and I fucking love it. It's so good. Mmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to post a picture. Mm. This is why I get, like, regular plates when I do these things. Because the mesh, it mesh is ridiculous. I'm going to pick it up after the recording. Mm. Yeah, this is so good. Like, it's so rich and chocolatey, and it has nuts in it. Oh, my gosh. It's, like, melting your mouth good. Um, I know I'm going to watch a movie tonight, so I've been, like, trying to keep my cravings down to, like, a minimum. Because, yeah, sometimes I don't like going on sugar highs. Like, people think that I like sugar highs. I really don't. Like, I can't do anything that's too sweet anymore. Like, I remember when I used to be young, it's like, sugar, sugar, sugar. And I'm just like, mmm. So, I've been eating this in moderation, you guys. I actually turned these into... And they came out. Fine, no, no. Fine, no, no. And I still, like, actually have some, like, y'all. To, like, not stuff my face with this is ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. Mmm. 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 Mm-hmm. 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 So, you guys, I'm gonna go take my handy-dandy hand sanitizer. Because, y'all, P.S., before I even start this video, I'm such a germaphobe. Like, people think, like, I be trying to be funny when they come around with germs, but I am such a freaking germaphobe. Like, if I keep it, like, a whole entire lean being with you, this is one dude, like, the other day... He came over here and, like, he has so many freaking jumps. He's like, like, he, the stuff that he did made me look at him like, this is a high consumption. Like, he's, like, a germ freak. Like, I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe I'm just, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe, maybe my OCD kicks in and I'm just like, uh, germs. I don't like them. Um, I don't even like germs with myself. Like, sometimes I get disgusted with myself. I be like, yuck, why would I do that? Um, but let's just go get into it. So we're gonna get this is a double bake. So in the first part of the video, I made this amazing lava cake. And I know you guys are like, we wanted to see the pictures. They are terrible. They're gonna go on Instagram. I refuse to embarrass myself. Actually, I'm probably gonna put the picture up here, like as in my thumbnail. But to keep it a whole and why is this doing this to me? To keep it a whole entire lean beam, I'm probably going to put it as the thumbnail because they did not come out right. But they actually did come out really good. Like many little lava cakes. Um, I'm going to have a bunch of little lava cakes tonight. Sugar, 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 Um, but no. But no, on some real shit, we're about to go get baked. That's the first part of the baking thingy. If y'all want to see the reconstruction and making of it, I will most definitely put a tutorial up. 
on how I fucked them up so bad that I actually got them right um in the description box but this time i'm going to actually make them from scratch and see the difference between them mm. the chocolate is just so <laughs> like y'all i know y'all like chocolate's always been good but i have been like a white chocolate girl like my whole entire life and like finally getting back into chocolate is like yum all right so today's two topics are going to be on two taught me how to love and nepotism so let's go get back together y'all know the drill and again So, y'all, I know y'all like, why do I make y'all do two before we start off the thing? Because the first one is to get rid of all the bullshit that you have for the first week. And then the second one, so you can just really, like, calm your tits, alright? Because today, why the fuck not? Um, so, nepotism. Hey, Google, what is the definition of nepotism? Nepotism is used as a noun to mean the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives, friends, or associates, especially by giving them jobs. Do you want to hear a few synonyms for nepotism? No. So, now that we have the actual definition of nepotism, I don't want to tell y'all basically, like, what I feel like nepotism is because... I know what nepotism is, but I need y'all to know, like, the definition, definition of nepotism. So, the nepotism, at its core, like, if you actually look at it, nepotism is, like, people who, you know what I'm saying? Like, they basically said empower who work together as a whole. And for me, myself, and I, I used to be a part of the Derek Grace experience. And for me, I thought that he was a scammer. And honestly... I just wasn't one of his favorites that he wanted to extend nepotism to. But after, like, realizing that, like, yeah, he does practice nepotism and, yeah, he does have this million-dollar company, but, like, you have to, like, literally be, like, sucking on his dick for him to be that person that's, like, mm. Yeah, so the DG Secret Society is cool, but it's not cool for me. Um... Because I just, I guess I wasn't one of their favorites. Because I, like, kind of called him out on a lot of his things. And, you know, can't call out the leader of a cult. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm supposed to say that. Um, mm, He's a good man. <laughs> but, no, nepotism is just, like, working together, like, as a unison. And I've realized that a lot of my projects that I really did really great on or I got, like, really great shit came from when I was working... When I was practicing nepotism. So, like, when I first started my YouTube channel, I remember, like, nobody wanted to work with me. And then once I, like, got, like, a little following, like, the people who I would work with before I had to take a big-ass break because of a fucking stalker. Um, I used to work, like, with somebody in tech and a bunch of other stuff. Like, I would end up watching, like, the 85 style show the other day. And I was baked watching this shit. And they had Snoop Dogg on there. And Snoop Dogg talked about nepotism. And I was like, a lot of the greats and the people who we consider greats use nepotism to their advantage. And sometimes, and sometimes, nepotism starts small. And you have to constantly be a student of the game. And it kind of made me realize, like, that I am a student of the game. Because, whereas people People think like I just get up and I just you know show a titty on OnlyFans or I just come on here and put up a video or some shit like that there's a lot of things and shit that goes into the stuff that I do and not only do I like have a voice for certain people who actually listen to me and those who find me and those who don't find me but it's like the people who I've worked with like they know the pieces that I bring in because sometimes I bring an intellectual piece like I can't really tell y'all all that I do because I don't want I don't want y'all to like try to get too close to me but the people in my circle know me 
as the full or the they almost know me in full so like they so they know that i'm nerdy geeky quirky that i can get some shit done if need be they know that i'm the money finder the money maker the person who gonna all get us the bag the person who go you know like they know me and i know them like on a different level because Whereas I may not have this one thing, they may strive in that area. So, like, nepotism works in a group fully if you don't, if you aren't good at somebody, you have that person on your team. Like, my best friend for me and my team, on my team, he is the quiet, he's the hush hush, he's the huh, he's the person that, you know, keeps the, keeps the, keeps the calm in the storm in me. And because it's certain days, I just want to, like, really just spaz out and be like, I hit it all, I hit it all, I hit it all. And he's like the, pop, 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 bring it down. You know what I mean? Um, I just realized that 2014, is it? Hold up, wait. Yeah, 2000, no. Hey, Google, what's 19 times 106? 19 times 106 is 2014. Boom. 19 times 106 gives you 2014. And if you have 2014, that's the year I graduated. I'm good with numbers and math. And my brain does shit like that weirdly and randomly because I have nerd brain a lot. So when people talk about like, oh my gosh, you're such a geek, you're such a nerd. I'm like, I know. Thank you so much. <laughs> because my brain just thought about that mid-video. But basically, my best friend to me is the calm... Of the storm like where people are like boom 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 and like when I cuz if it if I get here bitch and I don't go down I'm gonna get disrespectful my best friend is the calm and the storm I remember I when I was in a mental institution I called my best friend and my best friends at the time which was a girl and the dude who's still my best friend to this day I called them like every day to help me get through it, like mentally, because that is one of my real life fears. To go there again and nothing be wrong with me. Oh my gosh. Like, y'all don't understand. Like, people like people think that mental institutions are these places that you go to that you get help. Like, yeah, you get the help and shit, but it's like, they stand over you. You got, they watch you. They make you eat shit. Like, I knew, like, when I went in there, I was vegan. And I wasn't, like, eating meat. And because I didn't eat the food that they thought like I was starving myself and I was like, I'm vegan. And they're like, oh, they'll lie about anything. And I was like, I really haven't had meat, like literally had meat and threw up. And they were like, oh, wow, maybe she is vegan. Like that shit fucking my stomach for days. Oh, my gosh. And they really tried to keep me in there because I would not take medication. Like, uh, it was just so, t it was just so awful. But because my team and I practiced nepotism, like, I was the life of the party, the person that everybody can count on, the person who push came and shove came. But my homegirl, she was good at the mental shit. Like, she was, she, she was, like, a social worker or some shit like that. So, she had her degree in psychology. Um, she honestly could have practiced because she was a fucking genius at this shit. So, like, everything that I kind of knew, I learned from her and she learned from her school. And, and a baby, she had got her motherfucking, um, I think she goes all, like, she got her degree. But I think it's, like, her master's or some shit. It was better, it was bigger than BA and A, like, short you like really put in her work and I think she was working on her like her master's in psychology so my good sis she graduated and with all that knowledge and shit and plus she was actively like working under people and she actually had like cases and stuff like so she was good in that area so when I got out she helped me in that area my best friend was the calm like my like my male best friend has always been the calm in my life so like He'll, so like, so it was times when he, 
he was the calm. He was the understander. He was the person that helped me get through a lot of shit. So even though like the nepotism did not show itself in other things, like my friend circle for me worked out for me. Them two couldn't stand each other. But like me, her, and like that group, we had our own thing in nepotism. You can have many little small groups of nepotism. Like people often think like, oh, if I'm practicing nepotism, then no. Like you can have multiple small groups and get shit done. Very much so. And you can have different groups that y'all practice different, like, different shits. Because I know, like, some of my friends don't get along with other friends. And some of them just don't like each other because they get jealous of little old me. You know, I'm the life of the party every time I show up. Like, being here, being here, being here. All right, and the last one I want to talk about is who taught me how to love. Because, it's like, I don't really... <laughs> Yeah, I really started, like, having really good memories, y'all. So, I was about to take y'all down memory lane, rolling down the street. <laughs> mm, yeah, if y'all have really good friends, do not do anything stupid to ruin a friendship. Like, honestly, me and my good sis probably could have worked out our shit before we both went to two. I went to one extreme, she went to one of my extremes. Child, it was so ugly. Like, if I could say anything, like, that woman taught me how to love. Like, my two best friends are the main two people who taught me how to love because it wasn't, like, a family love. Because I always, like, family has always been, like, in my top three priorities of things that I love in this lifetime. So, for them, I have, like, an unconditional love for family. But, oh, my gosh. Like, when I say I have an unconditional love for family, like, I damn near will almost let them get away with fucking murder when it comes down to me. And... Not anymore, though, but, like, family has always been important to me. I'm learning how to practice boundaries now, how to love from a distance with family now. So, there's that. Um, even outside of the family shit. Um, but, yeah, back to what I was saying. Um, my two best friends at the time really taught me how to love. And looking back at it, I didn't, I should never did that. She should never did what we did. And we should never gone bingo on tip for tap. Like, we should have, like, literally had a conversation and fixed the shit that needed to be fixed. Because by the time, like, it was so awkward. Like, I think the last time conversation I had with the one person who, like, really, really taught me how to love. Shout out to you. Um, I'm not going to say your name because I promise I'll never say your name again out loud. <laughs> but the last conversation that we had really hurt me because it made me realize that um a bitch was with me through a lot of shit like people think that I'm always this happy go lucky person I'm really not um it's been days where I've like literally cried because my work got so hard and people like to say, like, oh, it's the internet. You can easily get off of it. Like, you don't have to let everything get to you. But, bro, sometimes y'all bitches are fucking evil. Like, y'all are so evil. Y'all are the most evil people I've ever met. Like, some of y'all are, will, like, literally come and be like, you're ugly, you're fat, you're this. And then if you hear that shit over and over again, and people, like, getting your shit reported, taken down, people mass reporting you, doing the shit to just to take you down because they you said something that they didn't like. And even though you had a very valid point, it's because they, because they rubbed in the wrong way. Now they want to take you down. Now they don't like you. Oh, like, people tell me, like, oh, you're a liar. Like, who the fuck wants to sit there and lie? Like, that shit used to hurt me. And that bitch was there. Like, when I say it used to be days where I just was like, bro, I really feel like quitting this whole entire shit. Because emotionally, it's taking a lot out of me. And people like to say, like... <sighs> Oh, it doesn't take a lot out of you, bitch. It motherfucking does. Like, it takes so much out of you to get on this shit every single day and just to be comfortable in your own skin. Like, now I'm comfortable in my own skin. I don't give a fuck what you bitches say. But back then, them days used to fucking kill me. And she used to be the main one talking about, let's go to Waffle House, let's go do this, let's go do that, because I don't want you to sit here and be stuck on no bullshit, bro. No, like, real shit. If you have a friend and you can make it work or you can fix it, like, if you see it getting ugly, like, just take out the time 
to just really sit back and fix some shit. Like, put your pride aside. Put certain things aside. Because I, I, like, bitches all, like, bitches let's say, oh, I know it don't, it don't hurt me to lose a bitch. It hurt me to lose friends. Like, and when I say, like, friend, I mean, like, genuine friends. Not people who just came into my life trying to be my friends. Like, recently just hop in and be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to attach myself to her. No. But, like, the people who actually were my friends and the people I can actually call friend. Losing them hurts. Like, if a motherfucker say, like, oh, well, I don't never miss this person, like, right now, I genuinely wish I could go call this girl and be like, Happy New Year, it's a bitch. Ah! How's, how's, like, life after graduation? Like, I want to have that conversation. I want to say, like, how's life after gra graduation? Like, did you go back to that nigga? Like, what's up? Like, what's T, sis? Like, did you ever fix a relationship with your mom? Like, girl, please tell me you got out of that $14 paying job. Like, I want to have, like, conversations like that. I want somebody that's going to understand the geek in me and not look at me sideways when I geek out. Because me and this bitch used to sit back and watch murder documentaries. Like, movie day was our shit. Get you some snacks, lay up, visual FaceTime, via FaceTime, shit like that. Girl, ma'am, like, I miss that shit. Like, and... It ain't been easy, like, trying to deal with these other females because sometimes I overcompensate with my new female friendships. I, like, let a lot of shit slide, and I'm just like, yeah, maybe I deserve this. But I was like, nah, I really don't. Like, <laughs> I already paid for my sins in that friendship. I did. I paid for my sins in that friendship, and I'm no longer doing it because the people who taught me how to love was, like, my most close inner circle. I've always kept, like, a small knit group of friends, like, even in high school. Like, even when I was on the cheerleading team, like, I didn't even feel like a part of the team because I never felt like I connected, and nobody ever took the time out. Because I guess they felt like, oh, I just got on the team because I walked out and shit like that, and if it wasn't for my auntie, and I was just like, nah, it's like, really... Like, I constantly got it, and I always, because my favorite, the favoritism that I would get would sometimes outweigh how people would see me, and they would think, like, I just genuinely enjoyed it. Um, no, that shit came with a pressure. And the people, like, I've ever, like, um, it hurt me, like, because my very first female best friend was in high school. She went to the army. She got some adios. I was like, supposed to be my wife. Like, trying to get her back. The shit didn't work out. I had another friend. She got into a lesbian relationship. And that wasn't a problem. She just stopped talking to me. And that shit be hurting. So, losing people in my life has been something that hurt me a lot. But if I could, like, go back on any of the friendships, I would go back to that one girl who I stayed with, who I lived with. And I'd be like... Listen, bitch, I'm sorry. I should have never let my ego and pride get in the way. I should have just told you that I wasn't comfortable with the changes that was going on in our relationship. And the lies and shit like that. Like, I wish I could have just, like, said I caught you in a lie. Like, and this shit hurts my feelings. Because when she went low, bitch, I showed up to get the hell and. <sighs> when you love somebody, bitch. I get why they say it's a thin line between love and hate. Because I really wanted to hurt that bitch. And look who I hurt. My damn self in it. I hurt her. She hurt me. We both hurt each other. I don't even know. Like, the very last conversation we had, like, it was just like, damn can't come back because <laughs> I end up talking to her about like it's so crazy like after like we both like went to the, to both far in right came back at the end of the conversation and the things that we could have did before we hit that up point it was just like damn we can't even come back and it was like that's the last time I ever spoke to her
I just hope that she's doing well out there. You know what I mean? But that's who taught me how to love. That's my talk on nepotism. If y'all got friendships that y'all really want to fix, fix them. If they can't be solved, just walk away before y'all, like, end up hurting each other. Because ain't shit worse than, like, hurting somebody. Because, bitch, when karma come around, that bitch hit hard. I'm going to just say that, okay? Bitch, I... I must have did that bitch dirty because, bitch, I was sliding down the motherfucking wall and I'm still sliding down the wall when I think about my, how karma came and went on. Me, 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 me. Karma was like, da, 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 pa, 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 just beating my ass, okay? Okay, and a lot of shit don't move me, but bitch, that moved the fuck out of me. I was one moved ass bitch. <laughs> move, move, moved ass bitch. That's what I was. I was a moved bitch. People will talk about like, ah, shit don't move me. Nah, that I was, I was shooketh, shaking at the core. <laughs> I always make weird ass faces, but that's okay. That's in an episode.